Okay. Howdy, Internet. This is Goatface. And I'm going to welcome you back to the Goatface Corner in a minute, because first... We need to talk. It seems my encounters with a certain glitchy kid were a bit more public than I wanted. And I feel like maybe I owe everybody an apology for not being more upfront about it. I used the Goat Face Corner to lure Glitch Kid out of hiding and into a trap. And because I used the show to do that, I technically used you guys too. All your likes and comments are what got Glitch Kid's attention to begin with. So, I wanted to say sorry, and thanks. I couldn't have asked for better bait. And fans. Now that that's out of the way... Howdy, Internet! This is Goatface. Welcome back to the Goatface Corner. In today's episode, we have some unfinished business. And there's no business... ...like monkey business. Howdy, Internet! This is Goatface. Welcome back to the Goatface Corner Show. Whoa. In today's episode, we'll play the game, or maybe not, cause it's my show. Whoa. If you like it, Hey, Nestor? Nestor? Where's Nestor? Yeah, whatever. So, what appears to be the problem? Oh, right, duh. Will you give me one of your spray dealies if I get rid of him? Cool, let's play. Bonzi Kong 3 is a game created by Entertainment System and released to arcades in the year 1983, and I gotta be honest, this one's a weird one. While I personally would not use the phrase black sheep due to potentially negative connotations to people of the Capernet genus, of which I am one, I think, Bonzi Kong 3 is definitely a departure from the previous games in the series. Sure, it still contains Bonzi Kong and... Actually, now that I think about it, that's literally where the similarities end. Gone is Nestor from the previous two games, replaced not by his brother Howard, but by Alex the Bugman. I have no idea if the two are related, or if they've even heard of each other, frankly. They have a similar fashion sense, I guess, which in most cases would be enough to get them a separated at birth meme, but that's hardly a basis for common ancestry. Does anybody else remember those? There used to be a site for them. Uh, the exact same, or something. We had one just up the street back when I lived in Rush City. You'd go in, and it'd be wall-to-wall -wall with submissions of people's faces. And you'd look at one and be like, Oh yeah, I guess the Red Mighty Ranger does kinda sorta look maybe a bit like Strong Bad. Unlike Nestor, who had a pre-existing relationship with the Big Monkey, Alex has no such history. The best I can glean from the limited story is that you, as Alex, own a greenhouse, and Bonzi Kong is, for some reason, really upset by this development. So he breaks in and starts wrecking up the place. You may have noticed the story I've described put Bonzi Kong in the villain role again. I guess Entertainment System finally came to their senses about having what was quickly becoming their flagship character, Whipping Animals. You see, between the releases of Bonzi Kong Jr. and Bonzi Kong 3, Nestor hit it big. He and his brother Howard went on to star in their own game, Nestor Kids, which I will get to eventually, and as a result, they couldn't be bothered to guest in the next Bonzi Kong installment. So instead, you play as Nestor's clone, spraying animals up the butt with spray paint. Yeah, I warned you it was weird. Once he's made his way into the greenhouse, Bonzi Kong takes advantage of the two huge beehives Alex has hung from the ceiling for no reason. The official plot synopsis wants players to believe the hives are nests built into the rafters, but they are very clearly just tied to the same massive climbing ropes Bonzi Kong's using to cause mischief. Why does Alex even have those? You may recall that one of my complaints in the previous Bonzi Kong game was that enemy attack patterns had become very straightforward and plain. Well, worry no more. Bonzi's taken a page from Insect Teller, which I will also get to eventually. Bonzi's barrage of bugs flips and turns and spins with the best of them. Unfortunately, the playing field is more restricted this time around, so there's not a whole lot of dodging to be done. Not to belittle their efforts, of course. Taking them out is no easy task. But, in the interest of belittling their efforts, taking them out isn't exactly your goal anyway, so it's not a big deal. Your true task is to push Bonzi Kong all the way up to the top of the screen by tickling his toes with your spray can. Compounding matters, you are also being timed during this process. 
In previous Bonzi Kong installments, running out of time was a surefire way to lose, but in this game, something a little more interesting happens. When the clock strikes zero, these two little chomp champ looking guys wander out on screen and start eating away at Bonzi Kong's ropes, forcing him upwards. Once they've chewed through the ropes, you lose. Bonzi Kong drops down to your level and the game is over. When you combine these elements together, you end up with a game that is really, really, really hard. And I'm saying that from the inside, where I can do things like this, and this. I have no idea how bad it must be for this unlucky son of a gun. Unless you grab the Super Spray Can, in which case you can complete the first level in under 10 seconds. At any rate, should you be able to fend off Bonzi Kong's bees and spritzed him with enough cologne to make even a college student jealous, he'll escape upways into the next screen. I'm not sure what kind of side hustle Alex is running here to be able to afford a greenhouse with multiple stories, but hey, I ain't complaining. Maybe he's growing some kind of exotic plant you can't normally get around town. That's a thing people do, right? Anyway, you ascend to the second floor and bear witness to the glory that is... The exact same thing, but gray and red. I'd be disappointed, but... Actually, no, I'm just disappointed. The level design in the previous two Bonzi Kong games was just so much more interesting. Don't get me wrong, the game is still fun enough, I guess. It just doesn't really keep your attention like the previous ones did. Despite the genuinely nice visuals, there's not a whole lot going on. This is, unfortunately, where things take a dour turn. According to... The incredible history of video games, Tennis and Beyond, the story behind the craze that touched our hearts and changed the world. Whew. Bonzi Kong 3 sold only 5,000 units, trailing far, far behind the 60,000 and 30,000 units BK's 1 and Junior sold respectively. Gamers just weren't buying Bonzi Kong stuff anymore, and it was time for Entertainment System to move on. I mean, just look at the box. L right here, on the back. Bonzi Kong has plenty og cock nuts to hurl at you. Cocknuts? Were they even trying? It even calls this game the best Bonzi Kong of them all, which is just sad. Even sadder, aside from a few ports and games on Entertainment System's LCD Play Clock game, consoles, there hasn't been a proper Bonzi Kong game since. This was it for him, reduced to breaking into greenhouses, desperately trying to get his fix. For all the trouble he's caused us, you can't help but feel sorry for him. He doesn't deserve this. He was one of the first gaming mascots ever, and this is how Entertainment System treats him? How hard would it have been to slip him into the Nestor Kids game, huh? Just have him pop up in the bonus rounds or something to give Nestor and Howard a hard time. Give him something. This guy brought you so much success in the early 80s, and as soon as his games aren't profitable anymore, you toss him to the side. But I will be doing no such thing, I can assure you. Bonzi Kong deserves the utmost respect in his final outing. So I'm gonna climb up there and stuff his head into a beehive like the good friend I am! Alright, let's see what we're working with. Aha! Just as I suspected. I have no idea what I'm looking at. It wouldn't be a final level in a Bonzi Kong game if I understood anything about it. Okay, we've got a brick ceiling, which I'm sure is great for letting sunlight in for the plants. Two pine trees connected by vines? And worms the size of hams! All in all, a pigeon's dream house. Come on, BK. Don't make it too easy for me. This could be the last time we ever see each other. Throw me a curveball. I said the game was hard. Prove it. Friends, you know, like I pretend like I'm Hot Spock, you make angry monkey noises, I stuff your head into a beehive, and the viewers smash the like button! Just a funny, fun joke between friends, you know? There's no need to go in! Ah, crap. I... no, please! Fabrosi, don't do it! We can negotiate!
Well, these things happen. See you next time.